Hello, welcome back to Better Sushi Live Noding. In this episode, I'm going to give you a quick uh, demo and experiment using uh, Blender Cycles uh, real-time displacement. So I call it real-time because it is almost real-time and I'm currently using this Blender build that is actually going into um, Blender 2.8 features. So it's still 2.79, but you, you can see this is a, a Blender 2.8 branch. And you can download this uh, if you search for Blender build and grab the ones for your system. I'm using this Mac OS official. I think I'm using this one. So it's not like Blender 2.8. This is Blender 2.79 with few uh, Blender 2.8 features. And so yeah, let's just get started. Make sure you have similar uh, version or newer. So I'm gonna delete everything. I'm gonna switch to Blender Cycles Render and save as real-time displays and i will have uh, 3d objects uh you can i can use actually use uh like plane and then subdivide i think that should work you can use catwalk clark or simple um, but at some point i might use sphere chop to quickly generate the 3d mesh okay now we have a plane and I'm gonna be using cycle material. Switch to this uh, shader and then create a new. By default, we get a diffuse BSDF and this material output as usual. And what we really uh, want to see is this displacement. And this is the interesting part. So, but before we do that, we need to see the actual the actual material that's being displayed. Um, or rather like a texture. So we need to generate some kind of procedural texture. We need a texture coordinate at least. And we can leave it as it is. We're gonna be using generated or normal or UV. And for this one, I can use noise, but I think wave is actually more interesting. So let's try generated noise um, using this uh, generated uh, value to the vector. We're gonna use it for displacement, but before we do that, like I said, we need to see the actual texture. So instead of using diffuse, I'm using emission. And plug this into the surface, and let's have a look at the result. So we got uh, the usual noise texture. We can scale it, etc. Adjust the detail. If you increase the detail, it's almost like a turbulence. It's adding more details. Um, distortion you might want it or you might not but at least we can see there's a noise texture in all three color RGB and it's it's a uh, giving this color for our uh, plane if we plug the color into the displacement you will see that the plane is being displaced in uh, in XYZ directions right you can see if I increase the scale and kind of you can kind of see it is kind of doing something and this guy it's really dependent on the actual mesh uh, detail so we, we subdivide it once in the view in the 3d viewport here twice in the render if I increase this and look at the wireframe this has more detail now so if I switch to cycle render by doing this you can see now this plane is being displaced in three axes and uh, let me try if I kind of try to control the, the noise it's not displacing this object in the based on the normal yet right we need to we need to understand what's actually going on so the noise texture this will give like an RGB value three values that's gonna be pushing our uh, vertex points of this plane and if I'm not wrong I can actually adjust this and this guy is up updating in real time this is pretty amazing actually so but you still see that we are not using the normal if I try using the normal into the noise it's not doing it because that's not that's not exactly correct procedure maybe uh, we can try like separating 
the RGB or the XYZ. This is like something you need to get familiar with when you're using uh, Cycles nodes. There's RGB, there's XYZ. I think RGB should be between zero and one. XYZ, sometimes it's not normalized. You can get a negative value. RGB probably cut it. Um, maybe, I'm still not 100% sure. But let's try anyway, using the XYZ. <clears throat> so we're gonna use this noise color as the vector and just plug it in the in the z so the x and y will be zero plug it into the displacement now we are actually pushing it in the just in the z axis we are not using the normal of this uh, object yet at some point you need to and if i'm not wrong we also need to use the math or vector math maybe i use math first and you might need to use um, add and multiplier for displacement this way you can kind of control the position and also the strength of the displacement so this is how you usually do it sometimes you actually minus 0.5 here and then adjust it here so if we zero it out we have so I think this should be minus 0.5 depending on the, the actual displacement. Displacement multiplier is 1 between 0 and 1. So this should be like in the center of this mesh, our plane. Um, so yeah, using uh, subsurface uh, modifier, of course you can get more detail if you need it. But it's stuck at 6, you can go not, cannot go any further. And sometimes I actually prefer to use a um, stretch of add-on to generate 3D mesh, like a primitive 3D mesh. This way we can have like a more uh, responsive uh, real-time preview of our displacement. I'll show you what I mean. This is like a normal mesh, plain mesh, mesh with a subsurface. I'm going to delete it. I will use stretch of and then use a plane. And then I use B mesh viewer plug this plane in and look at it this guy being generated on the fly we want to center it and we want to normalize it so now if we have we can increase the detail display the wire I can go like 100 by 100 points we have 10,000 points now and we're gonna assign our material this is displaced our displacement material back to stretch off and we can increase this further like 200 by 200 we have 40,000 points here this uh, being displaced on on the fly and you, you can get quite amazing uh, detail very very quickly and you can see it updating here and don't forget that if you are using subdivision surface and also, if you are using the experimental feature of Blender, you can go deeper into the micro displacement. I don't, I don't want to go there yet. So back to this guy. And so instead of using noise now, I will change it to wave texture. So um, let me check. This is OK. I can get rid of the emission. Oh, we can't see anything if you do that. Use, okay, just back using this guy and switch to this guy. Plug the color into the vector. <clears throat> and we have some kind of wave. That's because this is the pattern that we generated on the fly using wave texture. I really like wave texture a lot. Uh, this is really interesting uh, really powerful as well uh, so you can get rings sine or sol and this is band so you have the sol wave or just use a sine wave and let's use let's try the ring and um, here we might want to use mapping and with the mapping we can kind of place the center at the center of our plane like that 
and you can play around with the scale if you like but I'm just gonna zero this out oh, actually set it to one you can scale it in the Z to get more detail of the wave you can also do it here remember you can you can do the displacement more or less here it's kind of nice this is remember our 3d object still looks like this but uh, this guy is displacing it in real time you can use try using distortion and try adding detail and you can get like something that looks like a mountain very very quickly so yeah of course um, when you start working this way you will need to get familiar with a lot of uh, nodes in cycles so that's what i've been doing on the side while i'm playing with animation nodes and scratch off add-on I'm really also try to learn cycles nodes really really well. There is a, a lot of like more advanced nodes like when you start using math and formula, try to get like a, some kind of a custom noise. That part is pretty advanced. But remember you already have a lot of noise uh, like a lot of nodes here that you can mix and match to get um, like um, more details or like uh, to get what you what you want so it, it can take you really far even just by using all these um, already available no available nodes you can of course go even more advanced if you're using script and OSL um, the open shading language inside blender but anyhow this part is really really powerful so play around with this first and see how far you can go with this <clears throat> the other day, I actually tried to make like a vinyl, like a vinyl records um, using displacement like this, uh, this method. And it, it has been quite interesting. And um, oh yeah, remember, I, I actually, I forgot also to do one, one thing. Instead of using plane, you can use other uh, shapes, of course. Using stretch off, you, you have like sphere, icosphere, you, you have like a torus. I can use a torus here and just uh, quickly maybe change the 3D shapes as a torus and let's see the result so we are still displacing it in the Z axis I will actually change this to exterior interior change the size see this is updating in real time very cool increase the resolution here there Sometimes it's good, you can see really nice result when you start to cover everything with points until you cannot see the the wireframe anymore. I'm not gonna do that now, but you can already see this guy if we switch to cycles. The displacement is working on our 3D objects. So this uh this one is I think resolution dependent on at render time. Uh, and the wave noise if I switch to noise and I want to get like a if I want to push this guy in based on the normal I think I need to use this value somehow so if I'm not wrong if I, I'm doing it like uh, in spare chop if I have the the normal plug into this guy and I'm using the noise and just add them together very likely we gonna we're gonna get this guy that's being pushed in all 3D axis unless I'm unless I need, I need to multiply the vector cycles doesn't have multiplier on the on the on the vector it has normalized but it doesn't have multiplier uh, although I think I think uh, we can use math to multiply so this might work or not so vector multiply plug this into well, I already have this one this one is pushing it in the only in the X on the Z axis so let me do this properly X and Y so now it's pushing it in the in all three axes so that's this is for the Y and this is for the Z this guy should be the multiplier so 
I think this might be doing it in all three axes. So this is without the normal. And this one with the normal pushing it. Oh well, I might actually have this. I need to have this set up for the normal somehow. Or I need, I can try averaging it. Yep, slightly more tricky than if I'm actually trying using uh, a displace modifier here and assigning texture. Because because if you look at displace modifier, it has an <coughs> option for direction of displacement, whether it's RGB to XYZ, which is what we are doing here, or using the normal of the surface, or in X, Y, or Z axis, or custom normal. So the normal uh, direction is very important, and that's what we need to recreate here in cycles. So keep that in mind, of course. So, if, but uh, the nice thing here, of course, with uh, our workflow using Spreadshop, we can always change our 3D objects, and this guy is gonna update accordingly. And we can change the resolutions. Let's make it like. 300 by 300 so it's quite large almost like 1 million points and we have we have our result here let's do it one more time uh, this is noise so this is large noise this is the detail like I said if we increase the detail you can start to see something that's like a turbulence this is distort and if we are using wave, let's see what we have. Seems like the normal is kind of being used, but not not hundred percent correct yet. So I don't know if I should plug the normal there. No, it's not gonna work like that. The normal is slightly more tricky. Maybe vector. No. No, I I rather use noise here. So that's a uh, kind of looking nice. You have, of course, other texture like checker, mask grave. Which one is best for this? But uh, if you have like skills, yeah, like like some knowledge of cycles already, this is gonna be very very useful. So whatever texture that you can generate procedurally um, using nodes, you can just simply apply it as displacement. You don't need to turn on you don't need to switch to experimental and then etc anymore uh, the displacement will simply just work if you plug in like a like a vector value I think so yeah and it's gonna displace it both in the bump and displacement I can use, just use bump but this one is using can also use both oh actually that's even more interesting when I use displacement and bump so yeah, um, definitely something you want to try. Try experimenting with this. Um, it's still something that I need to learn more. I need to get it to work with the normal correctly. But yeah, this is real time displacement using cycles and with the help of this spread chart, we, we can actually get a quick instant feedbacks. And you can, by being able to do this, you really can see how uh, the noise affects the 3D surface at render time and it's uh, really powerful. You can even animate it, maybe. So, yeah, tell me know, uh, let me know what if you have any question or feedbacks, suggestion you want to add. Uh, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Bye.